Okay, and... McLaren is back! Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt, and let us talk about the Australian Grand Prix's tire strategy, or at least strategy as a whole. So as the hat suggests, uh, I feel like McLaren did a hugely spectacular job today, but um, we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. So prior to the race, you know, going back to Saudi Arabia, uh, for an example, Saudi Arabia had used the C2 to C4 tires due to having a newer, smoother track surface, but not as long as the race distance as, you know, going back even further to Bahrain. For Melbourne, or the Australian Grand Prix, it was determined that they would keep the C2 as the hards, C3s as the mediums, but actually going to C5s for the softs, which was actually quite interesting. It, it made for a great qualifying and a great practice run and the whole rest of that. But uh, once again, you know, softs were not used at all in the race. So going to Pirelli's kind of estimation of how things would uh, pan out what the recommended pit stop strategies were going to be was that they were expecting that most people would start on mediums in between 17 to 27 change to hards or going as early to 12 to 17 to switch the hards again and then maybe change back to mediums to to increase that kind of pace at the end um or the kind of really odd strategy that they were thinking of was to switch back to hards after going on to hards which i don't think anybody did and honestly that's kind of like a i don't get that strategy i don't get why anybody would do that when you can obviously as the first strategy shows, you can obviously get, as Crofty said during uh, the race, that you can get about 40 laps out of your hearts. But on all in all, I mean, the other strategies that we saw a lot of this weekend was going to be uh, starting on hearts and then going to medium. So kind of doing the overcut strategy, which uh, we'll talk about in a second. Now, I said that nobody used softs, but that was technically a lie because technically Albon did, but... Again, we'll get into that in a moment as well. Um, much like Saudi Arabia, the ones who did kind of an alternative strategy, I wouldn't call it heavily punished, but were definitely punished. Actually, take that back. Yeah, th those were pretty bad. Um, so as you know, the first strategy show that Pirelli was, was thinking about is that you would start on the mediums and you change the hearts, and those obviously w was the fastest one of the weekend. It's insane to see that Albon, who started in P20 during the race on hearts, went up to P7 and could have finished P7 unless it was for that rule that states that you have to pit and change tire compounds mid-race. You have to use at least two different kinds. And that would have been amazing if that wasn't uh, a rule that was necessary. I think the only time that that rule isn't necessary is in, like, uh, wet races. Because Esteban Akan actually done 74 laps or something crazy like that on intermediates. Different, different story. But yeah, as I was stating, as you can tell here, um, Albon had a different strategy. He actually did great and went up to 7th, but again, had to pit eventually, so ended up in P10. Uh, the other big ones here, I have notes. It looked like Albon, Stroll, Vettel, Magnussen, Alonso, and Sainz were all on hearts. Sainz crashed out, so we can't really look at that for much of strategy. As well as Vettel. Um, Stroll, I don't... I don't even... I, I don't... <sighs> the more that I've been watching Latifi and Stroll both, the more that I'm like, why are these two people even in Formula 1 anymore? But with Stroll, it was... So you start on hearts, and then you go to medium, and then you change back to hard? Even Crofty and Brundle were talking about that. And, you know, <laughs> Crofty's like, so Brundle, as a previous Formula One driver, why would you do such a maniac thing? <laughs> and Brundle's like, I'm with you. I have no idea. I think the only reason is to hit that requirement that you use different tire compounds. And again, it was estimated that like 40 laps would be good on hards. So, I mean, if Stroll really wanted to, he could have gone out to like here and changed to medium but I just 
Whoever Stroll's strategist was, I don't... We need to have a talk. I don't get it. But again, like I was saying, uh, the obvious good strategy was the one-stopper. So you start on mediums and you go to hearts, and that's just... That's just it. I guess the reason why that was the better of the two strategies is, first of all, because everybody's on the same strategy. So you all have the similarly decreasing rate of tires at the same time versus having you know, like eight different strategies. So you have one person, you know, having really ba bad problems with their tires fading and then another person getting into the graining phase and the whole knot. Uh, so th this situation here is that all the tires, all the mediums, you'd start seeing them fading about here and then shortly thereafter start, you know, graining. So getting that the performance back by picking up extra rubber that's on the track by, you know, the tires fading and chunks coming off and then, you know, picking them back up in the whole the whole thing there but um the hearts here they just they kept their performance for a while it took five laps or more it was insane to see them it took like five or more laps to get them up to temperature and but when they did they they just held on i mean they didn't have the best lap times per se the only thing that really did help with that was um everybody losing fuel across the time so your cars are lighter and you're you know <laughs> people sweating so you're getting rid of you know the water weight out of your body while you're racing so then we'll we'll pick on alonso here as kind of like a, a different kind of a strategy so again most people here had you know anywhere between 34 and even going as high as like 41 laps i'm of course albon but he's an outlier here so Alonso here, about 36 or thereabouts. So that's average length for hard tires. And then swap to medium. So the reason why that didn't work here. So the problem was is that why it didn't really work out a whole lot here and why we've seen kind of a similar issue with these kind of strategies in other races as well is that because everybody else is on a softer compound of tire, it means that they can get anywhere between one to even two seconds faster a lap than on hearts. And why it hasn't worked is because with those softer compounds, yes, they'll have fading and they'll have graining and the whole rest of it. So the, the harder compound is more consistent. It's just consistently slower. So by the time that people pit, yes, Alonso went up into this area, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth. Um, I can actually double check. So Alonso actually went as high as fourth here. And because of the degradation of the hard tires, quickly started falling back. And then when he had to pit for the mediums, of course, lost all that position back. So, I mean, it, he started in 10th and then went down to 13th. So already telling that that wasn't the great greatest strategy. And then just started losing position quickly. Those medium tires just did not work out for him. And then had to pit, and that was it. So, biggest failures, uh, like always, it's like half the grid. <laughs> so, first of all, science, he fell off the track. There's nothing strategically that we could talk about there. Vettel had a first rough race coming back into F1 for the season. Hate to see it. Really great guy, humbled, and just an awesome role model just hate to see something like that happen to him uh verstappen sucks power unit just died again so very unreliable red bull power unit can't really do much about that yet um other losers here haas i don't know what happened haas down uh where do they go here we go so schumacher started in like 15th uh, Magnuson 16th. Their pace just wasn't there this weekend. So I'm thinking that the car probably had a run set up and then ended similarly in um, 13th and 14th. So biggest, biggest strategic losers here. Uh, this one's going to be kind of an odd one for a couple of different reasons. So Stroll qualified just horribly. And due to signs crashing out, got up to 18th, and then had like three pit stops in this area, which, I mean, if you're last place, fine, you know. If you want to try different strategies, that's fine. But, like, again, you started on hearts, changed to mediums, went back to hearts, and I think pit another time for hearts or something? It's like... If I, I was Stroll, I would be yelling at my pit crew, like, why the hell are you having me pit so often? I don't get it. 
So I thought I'd do a little bit of a, an amendment here to the original uh, point that I was trying to make. Instead of repeating over and over why uh, I didn't understand why a strategist strategist was an idiot or something. So what happened here is... At the beginning of the race, Stroll didn't do well, qualified poorly, and due to signs falling off the track and deploying the safety car, around that time, Stroll went back to last. And from there, what happened is, instead of trying to do a hard strategy and then change to a medium strategy partway through, kind of like what Alonso did, what the thought process was is, okay, Maybe they had the same intel that uh, Williams did for Albon, where it's like, hey, maybe we can make a set of hards last the entire race. So, when the safety car came out, strolls in last and said, you know, let's meet our requirement of having two different tire compounds used in the race. Cool. So, pulls him in, does the pit stop, throws him out on mediums, comes back lap later, puts the hards on, throws them back out. Because you're in last, and the safety car is out, so, I mean, you have your safety car train going through, you know, the, the main straight, kind of duck out into the pits, change your tires, come back out, catch up to the safety car train, and you're on your way. And then you do that another time for when you change back to hards. Makes sense. What the issue was, I don't know if it was Stroll or the strategist had noticed that his pace was just falling off. I think Stroll himself was probably like, hey, these, these tires aren't to the level of performance I was hoping. And versus trying to make them last forever, figured, you know, let's go into the pit, let's get a new set of hards on. I don't know if the, the hards were fading too poor, like too badly or something else was happening. So they brought them in during the second safety car you know, around lap 23 or 24, something like that, and had them finish on that last uh, set of tires, or last set of hard tires. A recurring theme is Sonoda. Um, even, it's very obvious that Pierre is the number one driver and Sonoda is the number two driver when it comes to AlphaTauri. But what's even weirder is, so in most cases, when you have a number one, number two kind of driver situation, you'll have your number one driver be on, you know, whatever the most likely strategy is going to be. And then your number two driver might be there and in some cases will use like a weird different strategy to kind of change things up. And in this race, Sonoda had actually copied the strategy from... Pierre, so it was a simple one stopper and around, you know, as everybody else pit, had also pit at the same time for hearts. Uh, Sonoda just didn't have pace, and Gasly kind of the same way too, because they ended up only in ninth. So I think the, the, the Alpha Terry has got some huge, huge problems that I mean, like. Because everybody's so focused on the fact that, like, oh, Verstappen crashed out, Red Bull's got all these, you know, reliability issues, and then Mercedes having all these problems with porpoising and whatnot. I think there's a silent fight going on with AlphaTauri where they're just not getting the performance that they normally have. And it's just... Normally, Gasly, last year, you would see him consistently ending up in P4. Consistently. Sometimes even beating out Perez. So it's just like, what what happened and i hate to see it i really do because i you know yuki at the very end you know sonata had finished like what p5 or something in Abu Dhabi. it was insane he just had a really good race and would hit all the strategies right and there's so much jumbling going on in the grid but yeah it's just ghastly in ninth and sonata nowhere to be found in 15th so sucks so on the flip side, biggest winners of the Australian Grand Prix for 2022, obviously, as the hat suggests, McLaren. Um, they just set, the, set up their car right. They had great pace. They did the one-stop one -stop strategy. Um, so yeah, they just qualified insanely well. Norris, unfortunately, last two places at the beginning to the Mercedes. Uh, but all in all, hit their pit window perfectly with a safety car. Um... Ricardo had a great fight on the way out of the pits with, uh, I want to say it was Stroll and Akon? No, it was Albon. That's right. It was Stroll, Albon, and then I think Vettel was there as well for a moment. Uh, but then Vettel very shortly thereafter had crashed out, so it's like kind of a bummer. But McLaren boys did great. 
fifth and sixth respectively couldn't be happier as a McLaren fan I was ready to write off the season and honestly I don't know what the case is I think they just got lucky with their setup I, I imagine that they're honestly like going to qualify and do the rest of the season at like p10 or less other one here uh biggest winner Leclerc I mean just didn't even lose position pit right at the one stopper did great had great pace couldn't ask for more um mercedes same situation nothing strategic here they just had their car set up well so it was just absolutely great um this next one strategically is the weirdest one of all of them and turned out to be the biggest winner so i have no idea how this even worked Albon started in P20 after a three grid place penalty due to an incident with Stroll back in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, we're in literally last. Might as well try some outlandish strategies just just to see where they come from. So again, started in P20, um, slowly made up the ranks due to Stroll having 18 pit stops and then uh, Vettel having some issues and it just kind of going up and up and up and up on the hard tires didn't really fade all that much and if they did they picked up graining and just had good performance all right fine so around this time frame after everybody's pit and you're just still on your hearts kind of like alonso was up here kept on trucking along trucking along and by the time that the pin pit window showed up engineer goes how are you feeling on tires and alban goes I can still keep going. I don't need a pit right now. Tires are holding up. Okay, sure. So everybody who needed the pit during that time frame did. And Albon just sat in seventh. It's just like <laughs> P20 to seventh. It's just amazing pace this weekend. And it's just like, wow. Um, then it all kind of fell off because at the very end, due to hitting that regulation or that requirement that you have to have two different tire compounds during a race, eventually they're like, dude, we really got to, we got to pit you. I know you want to finish on that, but I think the penalties are worse than what it's worth than what it is to just pit and take the immediate penalty per se. Um, pit for a lap on softs and just finish the race. So would have loved to see him just finish the race as is but oh well so yeah that was the uh 2022 australian grand prix kind of strategies here honestly quite a boring race as far as strategies go there's only like one or two kind of outliers that are really of interest everybody else did one stops and it was just it was a race of pace you know who was the fastest just raw pace which is also a very interesting race of that on that front because you know even though Albon had an odd strategy his pace was on fire so was Leclerc it was just and McLaren actually so no it was it was still a fun race maybe more of one of the boring ones of the season but fair enough so again uh thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this content make sure to like comment and subscribe We've got more of this coming up i know emila isn't going to be for a couple of weeks yet so uh stay tuned for that uh otherwise i've got some gran turismo gameplay coming up of me trying to uh gold trophy or gold star the uh license tests which oh boy <laughs> so stay tuned for all of that so again thanks so much for watching hope you guys have a great day today take care bye